Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mac Outdoors with Mia and Leah. We have been talking about guns in the news and Leah, being a journalism student, has really been paying attention to the news and I have just been busy, busy, busy teaching, hunter education and archery and all kinds of stuff, crazy stuff busy stuff, but Leah wants to share some stuff that she has found in her journeys, so stay tuned. This summer, whether you're at the range or in the field, WSI Sports' Hypertech Bamboo Tanks, Tees, and Leggings will have you covered. Visit WSISports.com and use Leah's affiliate code, LLCO10, for 10% off your purchase. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. Again, that code is LLCO10 for 10% off your order at WSISports.com. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast, where a dynamic mother-daughter duo share their adventures, tips, and advice. I am Mia, and I'll be accompanied by the one and only daughter, Leah. It is time to get to outdoors, hunt, shoot, and spend time with family and friends. Let's get this show on the road. So welcome back from Easter break. I hope everybody had a great holiday and spring break, and we sure did. I didn't get to see Leah, but we had fun in different parts of the country. And Leah, you messaged me telling me about a crazy law that you heard of and so what what all you you've looked even looked up even more of them tell me about some of this stuff that you found so on my adventures for spring break I learned a crazy law in Montana about fishing and I thought it was just a really fun thing to share with everyone this week uh, traveling around, I went to Yellowstone, and it was my first time to Yellowstone, and so I was saying I would love to fish the river, and all my friends said that they have caught huge fish out there, and they tell me, well, you'll have to go with um, another male, because women can't fish alone in Montana. They can't fish without a male present. <laughs> that is just crazy. That is so archaic. I mean, I, yeah. I've never heard of that. So is that any day of the week or is that so always? I looked up the actual law. And if you're married, you can fish by yourself on weekdays. But on Sundays, you can't fish without your husband present. But if you're not married, you have to be accompanied by a male any day of the week. <laughs> so is that a law? It's, I mean, it's still on the books, right? Yeah, it's still in there, but I'm pretty sure they don't enforce it. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Do they enforce that? I mean, like... Do they give tickets? Like, if you go out by yourself fishing, will you get a ticket? What What's the fine if you go? <laughs> I don't know. I looked everywhere trying to figure out what they, if they do enforce it or if they're getting rid of it or anything. And it didn't really say much. It just said the law. And there's a lot of jokes on the Internet about it. So I don't know what, I guess maybe I should go out and see what happens if I go <laughs> fish the river by myself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Who knows? Like, you might become a felon or something crazy. I, know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yikes. Um, I, I remember hearing of crazy laws, and I couldn't tell you any of them now. But that one has got to be one of the tops. You, our listeners, what if you would let us know um, – Either write us a review and let us know in the comments or message us on our social media outlets. But let us know what crazy laws have you heard of or what laws do you have in your state that are just insane like this one? <laughs> I figure it's a, ca and a cameraman for you, for the ladies when they catch a giant fish out here. Oh, it's good point. Yeah. 
<laughs> then you'll for sure have a picture with your giant fish that you catch out here. <laughs> there you go. Since that is really appealing to me because since my photographer has moved away, I have missed having a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So you'd have a built-in photographer, and I guess they just have to supervise you, make sure you know what you're doing, right? I guess so. <laughs> I don't know how that works. It would really be interesting to know the backstory on that and how they came up with that law. I mean, it, that's an interesting one for sure. Yeah. Have you, have you like found it. any other crazy laws? Have you looked anything else up while you were researching that one? Yes. So I looked up a bunch of laws just funny ones that are had to do with hunting or fishing and a weird one is in Tennessee uh -huh. and it says if you're an angler it's illegal to fish using a lasso <laughs> <laughs> they don't Not even have sturgeon over there I mean I could see maybe putting a lasso in the water to catch a sturgeon in Oregon or something but a lasso yes. Oh. It was very interesting. Mm. Another fishing one. Mm, the thing oh, that could go on. <laughs> Yeah, there's in Pennsylvania, it's illegal to fish with your hands or dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of the dynamite one before. I think that might be in multiple states that you're not allowed to use dynamite. <laughs> I'm sure. It's in it's probably in multiple, but the fish with your hands is kind of hilarious. That is hilarious. I guess that means you couldn't noodle if they had catfish up there. No noodling in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Then in Nebraska, it's illegal to go whale fishing wherever you could find a whale in Nebraska. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, is there a such thing as a whale fish or are there just whales? It just says whales. It doesn't say <laughs> whale fish. So oh. I'm not positive. Uh, did any of these have like a penalty or does it say anything like that in the laws? It know? doesn't really say a lot. I couldn't find a lot of the actual legislation on it. It was just a bunch of different articles. With dating crazy laws. Weird laws. <laughs> Those are definitely weird laws. <laughs> no whales in Nebraska. No noodling in Pennsylvania. Well, not noodling, but no catching fish. <laughs> Can't use your hands. And on the hunting side, oh. I found one in New Hampshire. It's not really that weird, but um, you're required to put your name and address on every arrow that you hunt with. Whoa. What state is that? New Hampshire. Wow. You put your name... On every arrow. So now you love to archery hunt. I love to archery hunt too. If you were going to put your name on every arrow, how would you do that, Leah? <laughs> and your address. And I your address. You'd probably have to write your name on one fletching and then your little oh. address on your other fletching and then more on your other fletching. See, you are brilliant because I was trying to think like if you put duct tape around your arrow you're going to uh, offset the balance and your arrow is not going to fly straight or if you were used a light more lightweight um type of tape or something it would mess up your the flight of your arrow right but here you are yeah. you're so smart you're like i'll just write it on my fletchings <sighs> yeah but most Genius. People, even with their regular arrows right this is the kill arrow this is your practice arrow <laughs> they do yeah, I know I do with my hunting ones. I make have one specifically for practice. Then I write a little P on my fletching. and. Wow, I have never done that. I just know which ones are which, and I put them in a certain order in my quiver. Kind of like when I load my shotgun for duck hunting, I load them in a proper way so that I know which one's first, second, third. No, is that yeah, a bad, I, is it a bad yeah. idea to do that? What if I get excited and forget? I think that's why a lot of people do write on their fletching because I know mine are organized too, but I know when I practice, 
I always try to like grab the same arrow. Right. So then when I'm hunting, I automatically grab that arrow. But sometimes I'll go from like the front of the quiver towards me, but sometimes I'll take from the first one closest. And so uh-huh. I put a little P on the practice one, especially with the broadheads and stuff. So we and- definitely got an archery tip for everybody. Pay attention <laughs> with the archery tips today. Crazy laws and archery tips. <laughs> <laughs> And it doesn't affect your arrow because it's just a little marker. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I wonder how many of our listeners, which ways they mark their arrows, or if they do. I hope you guys will tell us on our social media what you do with your arrows to keep track of them. <laughs> yes. Do you have any More? other craziness for us? There's a couple other ones. Um, let's see. In Connecticut... It is illegal to hunt gray squirrel, rabbit, or other fur-bearing creatures with dynamite, fire, oh. smoke, brimstone, sulfur, gas, or chemical. Oh my gosh! And you know that you do you know the craziest part about this is they wouldn't make these laws if somebody had not done it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Oh gosh. That makes me consider the whale law though. Yeah. Maybe they meant a fish if there's some sort of whale fish. Is there such a thing as a whale um, fish? Let's look it up. I'm going to look it up really fast because now you have me <laughs> curious. That law makes me think of the Looney Tunes and smoking out the rabbit. <laughs> and almost <sighs> hilarious. So if I Google whale fish, it just comes up with humpback whales, blue whales, sperm whales, killer whales. So I don't know if that one, maybe our listeners can enlighten us on that one as well. We have, we need a lot of help today from you guys. I hope you'll comment sometime and let us know. <laughs> Um, so this summer, our for the Professional Outdoor Media Association, the conference is in Nebraska. So maybe I can do some research while I'm there. Yeah, you can go. You can't go whale fishing, but maybe whale <laughs> watching. <laughs> maybe yes, whale watching in Nebraska. I'm putting it on my to do. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, here's a really funny one from. Los Angeles, California. Uh oh, this one's scaring me already. Illegal to hunt moths under a street lamp. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not sure why that one was. Yeah, that one's kind of interesting, also. No hunting <laughs> moths under street lamps. Do you suppose somebody was out there with their shotgun trying to kill the moths under a street lamp? I'm, I'm not sure what the backstory is on that, but yeah, that one would be interesting. Yeah, we need to learn more about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see other ones. Minnesota, it is specifically illegal to sell the gall bladder or paws of a bear Mm -hmm. unless attached to the hide but not any other parts just the gall bladder and paws unless it's attached to the hide that's the part that's getting me because i know in a lot of places it's just simply illegal to sell the gall bladder but why what would be the purpose of having it attached I am not positive, but I thought that was really interesting. It is very interesting. Here's a good one from Texas. It is illegal to shoot a buffalo out of a second-story window. (laughs) (laughs) But it's okay from the first story? (laughs) I guess so. I don't know why. I wonder if you could shoot it from the third or fourth story (laughs) yeah it's not the second story (laughs) hmm that one has me curious also it also says it's legal for a blind person to hunt in texas 
I guess they use special laser equipment and have to have a hunting partner, which I would hope they would have. <laughs> uh, yeah, because without a hunting partner, how would you identify your game and know that you were shooting the correct, Yeah, not just the correct male or female, but the correct species? So you, yeah. yeah, but that is kind of cool because I mean, as you know, it's kind of neat to see disabled hunters and watch them be successful on their hunts. So yeah, I would like cool. to see the technology they have for a blind person to hunt. How they would? Yeah. This it only says special laser equipment. I wonder how that works. Yeah. Well, maybe we can research that and share that on another episode. Yeah. Yeah. Another one. So in Texas, you can hunt from an aircraft and water clock, blah, water craft, but in Tennessee, you can only hunt from aircraft, watercraft, or motor vehicle if you're in a wheelchair. So it's okay if you are disabled or if you've been hurt and have to be in a wheelchair? Yeah. Very interesting, I think. Very interesting. The things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, there's so many crazy laws. In Kentucky, it's illegal to fish with a bow and arrow. So I guess you couldn't bow fish there. Bow fishing's illegal in Kentucky. Dang it. Here's a good one. In Chicago, it's illegal to fish in your pajamas. Oh my goodness! Whoa, all those Walmart <laughs> people are out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder what pajamas means, though. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Does that mean no sweatpants, or does that mean yeah. no sweatpants that have polar bears printed on them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hmm. There are some hilarious ones. In Ohio, it's illegal to fish while intoxicated. Oh. In Oklahoma, fish may not be contained in fish bowls while on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now, this is including even goldfish or your little beta fish or something? I'm not positive, but... I wonder if it would be okay to have them in the bags that they send them home from with from the store. You know, they put them in those yeah. bags. I wonder if you could have them that way, but not in a bowl. Very interesting. In Idaho, you may not fish from a camel's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think that is hilarious. That Me one is hilarious. And as I said, that one makes me laugh because <laughs> why do they write laws? Because somebody did it, right? Oh, and I wonder why you can't. Right? Maybe because maybe the camel needed to have some polarized glasses to protect its eyes <laughs> from the fish hooks. I guess so. <laughs> the, there's so many funny ones. In New Jersey, it is against the law for a man to knit during fishing season. <laughs> during the entire season, not just during fishing, but during the season. Did you hear during that part? During fishing season. season. Okay, so I don't personally know any men that knit, but I'm sure there are some somewhere. <laughs> but you cannot knit, not just while you're fishing, but you can't knit ever during season <laughs> <laughs> that one is ridiculous in muncie indiana it's a crime to carry fishing tackle into a cemetery that one is strange that one's a little bit creepy that one actually okay since we're being silly and laughing today that one actually makes me think of that meme i saw that said all morticians should tie the bodies, tie their shoelaces together so that when they wake up, it's zombies they can't chase you. <laughs> so maybe that's what the purpose of the fishing tackle is. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of funny ones, though. Let's see. Louisiana chasing fish in a city park is against the law. 
<laughs> Can you picture the fish up on their back fins? Help, help, running. <laughs> oh, God. In Oregon, canned corn is not to be used as bait for fishing. Mm, that's in Colorado, too. No chumming the fish. But it's just canned corn. Just canned corn. So could you use canned peas? Or could you use regular, like, cut Fresh. some corn off the cob? <laughs> Fresh corn could be okay. Hmm. Very interesting. Very. But those are all the ones that I found. I'm sure there's so many more. But I thought, instead of all this seriousness, oh, some funny laws. Yeah, that's that's actually <laughs> a great thing, I, especially coming home after vacations and stuff like that. And with all the crazy news that we've been sharing, it's kind of cool to have something lighthearted and fun and something to laugh at. And I, I still wonder, like, wow, I wonder if anybody's ever been ticketed for these infractions. <laughs> I know. I wonder if you went and fished from a camel in Idaho one day, if you would get a ticket. Yeah, I, yeah. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Out Maybe. here near Yellowstone, they actually have a camel ride. Like, you would go trail ride horses. Hmm. They have it with camels just outside of Yellowstone. Wow. I thought that was super interesting. Why would you come all the way to That's small cool. little Livingston, Montana and go ride a camel in the mountains? <laughs> <laughs> Just to say you did. <laughs> How many people can say they've ridden a camel in the Rocky Mountains? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that is all the exciting news I found this week. I hope you guys got a chuckle out of at least one of those. Be sure to like and subscribe all of our social media pages, Mia Anstein and Leah underscore Huntress. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next week.